Welcome back to Pete the Wargamer and today you're joining me as I paint this deathcore of Creek conversion that I recently featured on my channel. If you're interested in how I built this, be sure to check out my tutorial which I'll include a link to in the description. After assembling my miniature, I needed to apply a primer. This would not only give me a good solid starting color to work from, but also provided me with a better surface in which to actually apply my paint to. The primer I'm using here is Vallejo's Black Airbrush Primer, but you can use whatever aerosol, airbrush or brush on base primers that you have to hand. I would however recommend using black though as this dark color will help with the grim tones of this model. The Death Core of Krieg's primary uniform color is based on France's early 20th century Horizon Blue Great Coats. To reproduce this washed out blue color, I'm starting off with a mixture of Vallejo's Black Grey with a drop of AK Interactive's Blue Ink. The result is a slightly faded dark blue mixture that we can use for our first layer. I also like to add a drop of airbrush thinner to my mixture in order to make the paint a little easier to work with. With this mixture, I then began to paint over the coat, trousers and shin guards. The first layer is quite translucent due to the thinner, but once this first layer has dried, which didn't take too long, I set about with a second layer to give me a good starting color of dark blue. Continuing with the same black gray and blue ink mixture that we used in the last step, I added a small amount of AK pastel yellow. By using light yellows like Games Workshop's Dawn Yellow or Vallejo's Ice Yellow, not only lighten the mixture's tone, but it also adds a little bit of warmth to it. Using a pure white here would have instead created a more faded or washed out blue. The small amount of yellow in it instead resulted in something that looks like it's being lit by a light source. This means that after thinning out the paint once again, I could start to pick out some of the raised parts of the cloth. By keeping the darker blue mix still visible in the recessed folds, I was able to start creating the appearance of light falling onto the model from above. The contrast of tones also helped to bring out some of the details, drawing focus to areas that I painted with the lighter mixture. The first layer, again, wouldn't provide a full coverage, so I needed to apply a second. This time, however, I slightly reduced the extent of my coverage. This resulted in the start of a gradient between the darker and lighter areas, which helps to boost the realism. With that first lighter layer down, I next went about adding even more pastel yellow to my mixture to create an even paler blue. Following those same principles as before, I once again reduced my area of focus so I was only applying thin lines of paint to the most prominent of the details in the cloth. And with that highlight, the coat is very almost complete. I wanted to add a very subtle grubby appearance to the coat to represent the mud churned battlefields that the DKK fight on. My solution for this was to apply a thinned out wash of Agrax Earthshade. By creating a mixture of one part wash to one part airbrush thinner, I was able to vastly reduce the strength of the wash. When this was applied evenly over the blue and then left to dry, the result was a close approximation to a grimy blue horizon color. After the coat had been completed, I was ready to tackle the brown parts of the model, which included the wooden rifle stock and the leather pouches, but also the gas mask. These could all be tackled with the same base coat of Vallejo's Chocolate Brown. I've been using a lot of Vallejo and AK Interactive paints recently, as you can probably tell from this video. I found that they have a really nice level of pigmentation, meaning you can thin them down, like I've done with this here paint, and still get some good coverage over your model. Once the base layer had dried, I went about using the same lightening technique that I used on the coat. By adding a little pastel yellow to my chocolate brown, I created a tan color that I then proceeded to edge height all the areas that were painted with the chocolate brown. When you're edge highlighting like this, try to focus on the edges that are visible when you look down on the model. Most light comes from above and so it's the areas that face up and are more towards the top of the body that tend to be the lightest. Not only does this result in a more realistic looking highlight, but it also vastly reduces the time it takes to highlight too, as you're not tackling every single edge. The next area to tackle was pretty much anywhere that I hadn't already painted. These mostly included the metal parts of the model, such as the helmet, parts of the rifle and the armor, but I also wanted to use this paint on the black gloves too. All of these were given a base coat of black gray. I'm a big fan of using these dark gray paints to represent black areas, 
using paints like the Army Painter's Necromancer Cloak, Games Workshop's Corvus Black, or AK's Anthracite Grey, all allow you to shade them with washes. If you'd used a pure black, then that's about as dark as you can go, and you can only highlight up from there. Once the base layer was down, it should come as no surprise to you that my next step was to add some pastel yellow into my black grey to create a highlight. Mixing paints like this to create your highlights isn't quite as convenient or maybe not as consistent as using a premixed colour, but it does allow you to cut down on the number of paints you need for a paint scheme. We're most of the way through this guide now and so far I've only used four paints and a wash. Whereas if I hadn't used mixtures, we'd be looking at around seven or eight paints instead. To paint the bedroll at the top of the pack, I began by applying a base coat of US Field Drab. The details of this were then picked out with a highlight made from mixing the base coat colour of US Field Drab with yet more pastel yellow. As I mentioned earlier, because I used a very dark grey to paint the metal areas, it meant that I could go back with a pure black to add some shadows. So that I had a little more control over where I'm applying these shadows, I thinned out some black paint. Using this thinned paint, I then started to apply it directly into some of the recesses and lower areas of the model essentially anywhere that you would expect to see darker shadows. If you did want to do this a little quicker, then a non-oil wash or similar could be used instead. It maybe wouldn't give you as much control over where you applied it, and the shadows wouldn't be quite as stark, but it would shave some time off your painting process. All that was left to do at this point was to apply a little metallic sheen to the metal parts of the model. I wanted to, at least for the most part, maintain that darker appearance, but without some sort of highlight, they would just simply blend into the rest of the model. So armed with a dark steel colored paint, Army Painter's Gun Metal to be precise, I set about carefully highlighting the edges of the metal areas. This small amount of paint gives these areas a slight reflective sheen, allowing them to stand apart from the other parts of the model, while still maintaining that dulled and dark appearance. As well as picking out the obviously metal parts of the model in this way, I also added a few small patches of metallic paint to the helmet. This created the appearance of damage to the helmet, chipping away the paint and exposing the bare metal below it. And with that, the painting was done. All that was left to do was to give the model a suitably muddy base, which I'll be covering in a separate video. And all that left me with this. And that brings us to the end of this guide for painting up your Death Corps of Krieg. This guide was a little more in depth than some of my previous videos, but even if you did find this technique to be a little too time consuming for your masses of ranked infantry, I do really hope you learned something interesting along the way. If you're interested in how I converted this plastic death core of Krieg miniature, then check out my previous guide, which I'll include a link to in the description. Before I go, I just want to say a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters and the folks who use my affiliates links. Your help is always greatly appreciated. If you like this video, then check out my other conversion guides and consider subscribing. And with that, the only thing that's left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.